Max Hale into the act against Kyle Gray at 184. Hale eight and two in duels. He and Incontrera have combined just three losses in dual meet action. You'd call this the meat of the lineup. You certainly would. And if there was a, a an all-star team of great wrestling names. First country, ballot hall of famer. Maximus Hale has got to be up there. So good. Hale squaring off against Kyle Gray. Gray coming into this one. Three and ten overall, one and nine in duels, and this is a tough paper route for him. Hale's been as tough as anybody on Penn's roster to beat head to head. He has indeed, although I'm impressed with the way Gray is hand fighting so far. I gotta I gotta say he's he's working to his ties, able to get good head control, went went for an underhook there. Curious to see what Maximus Hale does in this match. Again, similar to Incontrera, a guy looking to tune up for the postseason here, looking to just work, get a couple more reps in on, on the moves that work well for him. Hale, a junior out of Westchester, PA. No inside information here, but you do think that he has a really good chance of being one of Penn's captains next year. Is that right? Given what he's done and the way that he's respected there. Like I said, I don't have anything inside, <laughs> but just judging by the way that he gets a reception from his teammates and his coaches, leadership going to take a step forward next year. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a leader presence when you talk to the coaching staff, when you talk to the other wrestlers, a guy who leads by example. So I, I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see that. How's Gray been able to shut down Hale's offensive game so far? Well, right on cue, <laughs> Hale is in on, on a good single leg, but he, Gray was just doing a good job controlling the ties. Three. Hale, Hale, what Hale did well there was he evaded Gray's ties. He, he hit an outside shot that was able to circumvent the collar tie that Gray was, was getting him caught up in because Gray was doing a good job of controlling his head, controlling his arms. So smart maneuvering there by Hale to recognize that, work an outside shot, work an angle, not tie up with his hands, just attack the legs. He had the speed and agility to pull it off, and a nice fake to kind of work his momentum. Approaching the 10-second mark left here in this first. Four seconds. We head to the second, Hale with a 3-0 lead. Hale rated number 20 at 184. Penn coming off that big 34-8 dual meet win against Princeton. Morgan State coach is getting a bit of, a bit of a chuckle from the way <laughs> Gray lined up there. He he kind of put all of his body on Hale in a way that it was you're not allowed to do. And uh, <laughs> the angle that we've got here, you you can see the reactions from uh, from the coaches. It's going to be a learning experience, certainly, for sure. And I uh, it's kind of one of those things where I feel like he didn't even realize what he did. I was kind of, you know, caught up in the moment, but uh, second caution call here now, one on each wrestler. So both of them are going to have to be careful about the way they set up and start here. And you saw Hale take the extra second to make sure that he was not starting early. Yep. One neutral. Nice escape there by Hale and, and Gray, happy to, to cut him, didn't want to risk getting a stall call there. And I think if I'm Gray, I, I like my chances best on, on my feet here. I've been able to get into some favorable ties. So, you know, if there were a position that you, you would choose for Gray, neutral is probably where he wants to be.
Gray, a pretty powerful frame, and so he hasn't been overwhelmed by the strength of Hale. No, you've got you got two really strong wrestlers going at it here, and this is a great example of a wrestling match where you look for what I call the matches within the match, where you really want to focus in on the way that they're controlling tie-ups. To, to the average fan, you might think that this is not as exciting as a high-scoring, high-rolling match, but th this is as much about posturing and much about getting in right positions. Great example of that. Hale had the right control of the tie. Gray went for a shot when he wasn't in the right position to shoot, and Hale was able to capitalize, counter, and, and quickly turn that into three points for himself. See, back to the ties and positioning again. And again, textbook. Great collar tie, had control of his wrist, tugged on that wrist, gets, gets hit Gray to step that leg forward, and then attacks with a single leg, and is now going for a turn here. He's got a crossbody ride in, working that cross face. You can see the discomfort on Morgan State's Four face. Three, two, one, time. Hale couldn't quite flatten him out there, but... Does get the four, so we head to the third period with a 14 to one Max Hale lead. It's a great example of where Penn's conditioning is coming into play. You know, the first minute or two of this match, you might think this is, is gonna be a low scoring, kind of grinded out match. And you can see through, through, through getting the favorable ties, pulling on Gray's head, tugging him down to the mat, he's able to wear him down. And now you can see Gray taking bigger risks taking shots that aren't as advisable. And Hale is, Hale is too good to do that too. Able to get his final three and lock up the tech ball. Dominant performance by Max Hale at 184. And that sends us to 197. Cole Urbis will be squaring off against Eric Washington. But first, another look at this clinic from Max Hale. Textbook finishing, the thing that about Max Hale that really stands out. He is a guy more than most wrestlers that just has great fundamentals. He's getting into favorable ties, which he's using to his advantage on offense, but equally importantly, he's using that good positioning to control counterattacks on defense. You see Gray getting tired, taking risks on shots. Hale quick to reattack, quick to snap and spin.